There are many scenarios where knowing how to do something like this can be quite useful. Maybe you are animating characters moving through grass. So let's uh, see how it can be done. I'm going to open up a new project file, but you can get this to examine it on my Patreon page or my Gumroad page. I can see there's some rigid body physics, particle physics, and uh, yeah, this is all procedure. Let's have a plane. This is going to hold our grass and go to the particle system, create a new particle system. This time it's going to be a hair system. It doesn't have to be that long. We can use about 5,000 particles. And uh, if you want, we can add children to have more particles like that. I'm going to use my asset library to import in the car. Just grab this, scale it down, rotate it. Let me just animate the car moving from point A to point B. I make this collide with the hair particles. All I need to do is give this a collision setting and for the hair, I can go to the hair settings and turn on hair dynamics. If I hit play, you can see we get, we already get something. The, the hair might go under your object, but it doesn't matter. You just, we're going to be looking at this from the top, which is fine. We have a starting point. Now we also want to, to add in some vegetation. So let me use my quick trees. Let me get this. Let me create a simple grass blade. I can put it at the side and come here, change the render type from path to object and select my grass blade. Give it a nice material, split my screen, shader editor, and give this a nice green material like that. Everything still works perfectly, which is great. I can make a, var a few variations of this grass. Now have this in its own collection, call it grass. And I'll switch this out from object to collection and use the grass collection. Now we have we have some grass. Now let's also add these extra objects that are being collided with. So I want a few of these. Grab this. So I'll just have these in their own collection. Call it plants. Now I'm just going to use the same settings. So I'll call this one and uh, come in here. Use the same particle settings. Call this two make a copy of it and this time use the P collection. Uh, the rotation seems to be a bit off. So I'm just going to go into this. Let me first hide the first collection, the first setup. And uh, we don't need this many. Let's use about 50 and uh, maybe scale this up a bit just so we get the right correct rotation. Me apply scale, apply rotation. And I'm going to just rotate in video origins and until I find the right axis, 180 like that, apply rotation uh, to the, for this to rotate up like that. And I don't want them to be all clamped in one area like that. So I'm going to turn off simple. Uh, so that is just a single particle in each area. And uh, maybe I'll just increase uh, the count here, just like that. Now I can scale this up a bit and uh, maybe turn back particle one and just scale it down. For speed, I'm just going to change from collection to path so that we render more hair particles. Uh, make sure the second hair particle also has dynamics turned on. And you can see we already have uh, some nice collisions and uh, we are leaving the path like that. You can see this is really not that hard to set up. The only tricky part is when you want to add extra objects like rigid body. So for example, this branch is a rigid body simulation. Let me show you what I mean. So if I get a branch like we have here, let me just use this cut here. Now we want it to be a rigid body object. Now I guess I need to extrude this so that we cover a larger area. I'm going to give it a rigid body system. So rigid body active. Yeah, I hit play. It just falls down and I'm going to add a plane and this is going to act as our flow. That So I give this a rigid body type passive. And that, yeah, we have that. If I give this a collision modifier and you can see it's already working as well. If I want to tie it on this car, all I have to do is add an empty. Just use a cube like that, scale it down like that. Just And uh, I'm also going to give this a rigid body. Uh, this time passive and animated. So we retain the animation. If I want to attach this to the vehicle, all I have to do is add a constraint, a rigid body constraint. So rigid body constraint, uh, the type should be point. And I can start, I can select this and that. And now this pulls uh, the cut. Now you see we are running into a new issue. So the moment we add rigid body constraints, then this is no longer colliding with these other objects. 
So what you can do is uh, create a collision shape. Just shape it in the, or you can just duplicate this and make it a, a lesser, uh, give it less polygons. So I can just do a decimate modifier. Basically, we're just trying to create a collision shape, which should not have as much resolution uh, like the, the original mesh. Maybe, let me also just scale it up a bit. It doesn't matter because we, we are not going to be seeing it in the render. And uh, make sure it's parented to the original object and uh, it doesn't have any rigid body and any constraints uh, because that's what disables uh, the collisions for some reason. I don't know if it's a bug or what, but uh, it doesn't seem to work if you have rigid body and constraints on. So I'm just going to turn that off for this and just retain and just have the collision, the collision property. And then I can parent it to this, to its original, so that it carries the same animation. And now you can see we have the collisions working again, which is how I did everything. Also, now the last thing I could uh, show you is how I made uh, this chain. Yeah, so, and uh, what it is, is uh, a, it's a mesh, a plane like this, that is subdivided and uh, one point is hooked up to another to one object and uh, another one if you use ctrl h is also hooked up to another and i can move this and move the vertices that are hooked onto it and uh, this this is a cloth simulation so i give it a cloth simulation and I make sure the points that are hooked have a vertex group so i assign that to a vertex groups and uh, make sure that in my cloth simulation they're set as the pinning group so they they are always hanging like that. And uh, if I move these control points, you can see they get the animation. Uh, it's like a rope simulation. And since this is parented, let me just hook it to this control P and uh, this to somewhere on the branch control P. Since they are parented to uh, the different bodies, they act as a rope uh, like that. And uh, then all I have to do is convert this rope, convert this into a chain, which is very simple. You start with uh, mesh to curve and then curve to points and then instance uh, a mesh, uh, which is basically something like this. And I uh, convert that to a curve, give it some thickness and uh, instance to it onto a curve. Uh, make sure that the rotation is fade into the rotation, but uh, without this this addition, it will be like that. So I add uh, a few degrees to it so that it's aligned correctly. And then uh, because I wanted this to be like a chain and uh, this gives me this I instance, I rotate the instances again, uh, but this time by 90 degrees and uh, uh, without this selection, uh, they all rotate again uh, like that. So this selection is just to make sure that only the second, only the even chains are rotated. And uh, I, I do that by creating a selection from the index and uh, using the modulus, the modular of two, uh, that will give me an even selection so that I can uh, do that. I set the material and uh, then finally I get a chain. And uh, that's how you can do something like this. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.